all the moms are bragging online about how to homeschool their kids and create a sense of wonder and curiosity about the world. But what do you do if your kid despises school? There's nothing you can do to stir up this wonder and curiosity. Hey mom, so welcome to the Life Unboxed podcast, where we talk about all things entrepreneur, from raising your kids to running a business, and the most important, keeping your sanity. Yes, that is the most important. So I am Jody the mom, a successful virtual assistant and a homeschool mom of six for almost 10 years now. My goal is to help you homeschool and work from home confidently. So check out lifeunbox.blog for everything you need to start a business and homeschool well. So let's get into this week's topic. There is a lot of pressure we place on ourselves. How to homeschool in the face of critics or your own critic. I need to ignite a love of reading in my children. We need to be in nature. I need to do all the activities for a well-rounded education. Have I failed if my first grader isn't doing algebra? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On and on, these thoughts travel through our minds at three in the morning. But if your child despises school, then it is more pressure on you. It makes every day a battle and a fight, which sucks your physical energy, your emotions, and leaves you feeling like a total failure. Mom, you don't need to stay here. It is possible to break these patterns and change your story. You can rewrite it, mom. Now, is this going to be difficult? Yes, Are we going to uh, maybe step on some toes? Yes, we are. But hey, that's why I'm here. So why does my child despise school? You don't want to just treat the symptoms, but you want to find the cause of this attitude. Did your child have a bad experience? Is there a learning challenge that makes it frustrating? Or has your child just pushed the boundaries and bad behaviors are the default response? probably the more the case most likely the case in most instances you can change the narrative of your story school doesn't need to be a daily struggle but it needs to start with identifying the cause only you know your circumstances so get a notebook or journal and i have a few if you want to check them out and start writing down what you think the cause is talk it out with your husband mom or friend who knows your child. Sometimes we just need another perspective on our situation. And remember, if you want to get to the cause, you may need to hear some hard truths. So talk to someone you can trust and whose default is not to criticize. So don't go to the person you know who is going to just say something that's negative. And if you need to rule in or rule out a learning challenge, then find someone who can help you with that as well. And don't be afraid of the labels. This doesn't mean you need to tell everyone if your child is diagnosed with something, but it will help you to understand how to teach your child. It will also point you in the right direction to find the tools you need to teach in a way that will work for your child. This is all about knowledge being power and you getting all the tools that you need. So how do you start changing the narrative? Now that you've defined the problem or at least have an idea, it is time to change the narrative. And this isn't going to be easy to do because it requires changing habits but take it as a step-by-step process. Don't try to overhaul everything in one day because it won't work. I promise you that. So start with one thing to change, just one, and pick the easiest one. You need a quick win. Mom, you need to feel like you're winning for life and your child needs a quick win too. 
You want to get off the struggle bus when it comes to school, so don't exchange one struggle bus for another. Make a list of what you need to work on and then start with the easiest item on the list. I know this kind of counterintuitive to what everyone else says. They always say to start with the hardest thing, but I am for quick wins because quick wins motivate you to keep going. Uh, does your child despise school because he is frustrated with reading? Then start reading aloud together. Take the pressure off of reading. Pick stories that he will enjoy and read them together. Is he frustrated with math? Is there a math concept that he is not understanding? Then put math in a different context. Baking is a great context for math because the rewards are so sweet. So look at your list that you've written in one of my amazing notebooks and pick the quickest win. Okay, so now let's talk about five strategies what to do when your child despises school. So you've identified the reason, you worked on a quick win, it is time to really change things up. So here are five tips to help your child not despise school anymore. Number one, change how you teach. So I like the structure and order of textbooks and planners. All of these things just make my brain happy and calm. Just because I like these things doesn't mean my kids do. It is easy to fall into those things that are familiar and comfortable for us as mom, but your child may have a different learning style. So teach to his style. For example, my oldest son is a strong read and write learning style. I can hand him 50 books for the school year and he doesn't bat an eye. Give him a stack of textbooks and he is instantly overwhelmed. Now, my second son is more visual. If I hand him 50 books for the school year, he would despise school too. So they're very different in how they learn. The most important thing you can do for your children is teach to their learning style. If your son is a hands-on learner, then play games. Depending on the game, you could cover reading, math, geography, history, and logic. Explore outside, science. There are so many ways to learn outside of the textbooks. And I do have another show. It's 15 everyday um, activities that count as homeschool. So I'll leave that in the description below as well. If your daughter is an audio learner, then let her listen to books. The foundation for all learning is a love of reading. So do everything you can to encourage a love of reading. And I have another show on that too. Listen to silly stories. Encourage her to read along with the actual book while she listens to it on audio. This will make it much easier for her if she is an audio learner. There's more than one way to learn in school. And someone, as someone who is completely self-taught in almost everything, almost everything I have done, I've taught myself. The most important lesson you can teach your kids is how to find the answers to their questions. In life, we don't seek answers in textbooks. So give yourself permission to think outside of the textbooks or, you know, just change the textbook. There are so many options out there and you may just need to change your curriculum. If your child despises school, then change how you teach and definitely change your curriculum. Number two, okay, this is where the toe stomping comes in. You need to change habits, behaviors, and attitudes. It is very easy to fall into the familiar habits and behaviors, whether they're good or bad. Your child may despise school because this is the pattern of behavior that he is used to. Uh, a big part of homeschool, of how to homeschool when your child despises school is changing behavior, habits, and attitudes. I know, some days it is just easier to look the other way or pretend we didn't see it. You know what I'm talking about, mom. You do. We're tired of hearing our own voice say the same things over and over again. And I'm with you, mom. But again, I'm going to say the hard things because I need to hear it too. This doesn't help 
our kids or ourselves in the long run. If your child is used to waking up every morning complaining about school, then change this behavior. It is probably just a bad habit that needs to be broken. So start with what are you grateful for every morning? And don't look for anything deep. Like, let's keep the bar really low on this one. We just want the complaining to turn into, I am grateful for X, Y, Z. Because gratitude starts to rewire your brain and it reduces symptoms of depression and anxiety as well. It also helps reduce stress and improves sleep quality. So start with gratitude in the morning. And okay, this step is going to be hard because you're going to have to look at all of your parenting. Are there behaviors that you indulged? Have attitudes gone unchecked? And are there words that were excused. If you want to change your narrative, then you need to change your bad habits and how you parent too. Mm, I know. Sorry. Feel the toes. I feel the toes hurting. Start with one thing. Go for the easy win. Explain to your children what you expect from them and then stick to it. The foundation for all parenting is to simply be consistent. Yes, it will be hard at first because your kids are going to test you. Stay consistent, mom. Stay consistent and you will see a change. Identify the attitudes, bad habits, or behaviors that need to change. Pick one to work on. Set your expectations with your children and then be consistent. Number three, make your kids responsible. So the secret on how to homeschool well and create a love of learning in your kids is to give them the gift of responsibility. And this will also create independent learners. Again, this is going to be really hard to start with. But one thing that I've seen with all my kids is they thrive with responsibility because it also comes with more freedom too when they can prove themselves. And you can start this in elementary school. I've started this in second grade, and it makes the rest of the school years so much easier. So start with nothing else happens until schoolwork is completed. So you can start that in elementary school. Yes, my kids can take as many breaks as they want, but all of the fun stuff is on hold until school is completed. So it really does motivate them to finish their schoolwork. And then it is up to them to do it. So give them the schedule for the week. They need to check off when the subject is complete and have them check their daily work, like in the answer keys. Let them check their own daily work. And this is the start of independent learning. And it doesn't have to be for every subject. Start with one subject. That's fine to do too. Then show them how to find the answer to their questions. So this step is all about teaching them how to fish instead of feeding them fish. So whether that is using the internet, looking it up in books, or asking mom, your kids need to be responsible to get help when they need it, whatever that help looks like. If your child despises school, then this will be a battle to start with. You just need to be more stubborn than your kids. And if you're going to change your story, then you need to stick to it. Number four. So get your kids' input. Sometimes we just need to listen to our kids, not to let them dictate the plan or what they want to do because they will say never do schoolwork. But present your expectations to them and then ask them to tell you how they plan to meet your expectations. And then you can have them, you can just, you know, throw their own words back at them. You also might be surprised at what they say. This will also give you more insight into why your child despises school. And number five, set clear expectations. And I'm going to say it again. You know what I'm going to say. Be consistent. 99% of good parenting is simply being consistent and meaning what you say. Many times, kids just need clear expectations spelled out, and then they need to see that you will be consistent with them. 
but don't overdo the expectations. You want your kids to meet them and you don't want to be overwhelmed with being consistent. (laughs) So start with one subject. Let your child know that you expect a minimum of 80% on all quizzes and tests if you grade and that you you also expect him to ask for help when needed. And next up, next one, it will be done without complaining. I know, the hard one. Go back up to point two. Remember, it is okay to say no. You are the parent and you want the best for your child. Sometimes the best for your child is no. We are at the end, mom. And I know that was a lot. And I know it can be overwhelming to homeschool when every day is a struggle and your struggles are unique to you. However, you aren't alone in them. And the these are tips and strategies. These are just a tool that you can use uh, to change your story. So how are you going to rewrite your narrative? Let me know. And if you have more questions, you can always send me an email. I am so glad you joined me today. If you want to help spread the word, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm on all the, pop- I'm on all the platforms. So remember to check out the Life Unbox store for all of your mom boss merch. And we have some pretty good merch over there. And you can support the show with coffee. Visit Kofi, that's K-O hyphen F-I dot com forward slash life unboxed blog. And you can buy this tired mama a cup of joe because I need them to keep me going. And for more great mom entrepreneur content, follow Life Unbox on social media or check out lifeunbox.blog. And be sure to share the podcast and video with your friends. And I will see you in the next show. Mm-hmm.